This video introduces the um, isolated boost DC-DC converter often used in the um, um, high frequency isolated PV string inverters. Uh, in this video we look at the, uh, the basic operating principles, look at the uh, four um, intervals of operation and go on to derive the input-output relationship for this isolated boost converter. Okay, as a background, this figure shows the um, complete power stage of a high-frequency transformer isolated PV string inverter, uh, highlighting the various subsystems like the DC-DC stage and the DC to AC stage. Now here, the uh, function of the DC to AC signed PWM stage is to control the current that is injected into the grid as well as to regulate the DC link and uh, provide features like island detection and if there are any grid support features, those are implemented by the DC to AC stage. The DC DC stage, which is what we are looking at in this video, um, is responsible mainly for providing the galvanic isolation through the side frequency transformer. It also provides a voltage matching to match the uh, PV voltage with all its um, wide range of vari variation to a um, fairly regulated DC link. And uh, probably most importantly, the DC DC stage is usually responsible for providing this maximum power point tracking. And then um, a characteristic of uh, any single phase uh, power system is that the power uh, into the grid is uh, pulsating at twice the grid frequency at uh, 120 hertz for a 60 hertz system. Now um, we require or it is desirable to have the uh, power from the PV to be a continuous smooth DC power so that we get the maximum power at, at all the times. Uh, so the difference between this uh, pulsating AC power to the desirable DC continuous power from the PV. That difference is supported by usually a large bank of capacitors, usually electrolytic capacitors, and uh, many a times this um, this stage is considered as part of the, at least from a design point of view, it is considered as part of the DC to DC stage. So we will look at that as well uh, in the discussions on the, the different videos discussing the um, isolated boost DC DC converter would include the design of this capacitor as well. A brief discussion on the application of this isolated boost DC-DC in a PV inverter application. Um, first of all, the uh, input voltage, which is the PV voltage, can have a wide voltage variation um, from 250 to 550 or it can be even um, maybe even 200 volts to 550 volts. That is the PV voltage and this is needed in order to be able to support um, many different configurations of PV panels and many different numbers of PV panels connected in, uh, in series. And also for a given system, for a given number of panels, the voltage is a strong function of the temperature as well. So if the temperature is varying over a wide range, then the, there will be a corresponding volt, uh, variation in the PV voltage as well. Now, so that's the input voltage. And the output of this DC-DC stage is usually regulated to uh, either 400 volts or 450 volts, depending on what is the uh, grid voltage magnitude that this is um, interfacing at. Okay. So this is uh, roughly uh, uh, a 200 to 550 volts input, 400 volts output DC-DC uh, application. Another unique feature about this uh, application in a PV system uh, is that um, Typically, any DC-DC converter tries to regulate its own output voltage by controlling the uh, duty ratio or whatever the control mechanism is. But in this case, the objective of the isolated boost DC-DC stage is not really to regulate its own output voltage, the DC link, but uh, to regulate the, its input voltage, which is the PV voltage. And this is done uh, based on the reference voltage from the MPPT algorithm. The regulation of the DC link is really done by the following DC to AC stage. Okay. And uh, finally, the, uh, the turns ratio selection is done such that the uh, converter remains as a boost converter for all operating conditions. Okay. So what that means is, uh, for example, in a non-isolated uh, basic boost converter, the requirement is that the input voltage Vn is always less than the required output voltage. Okay. But clearly in this application where the input is uh, you know, varying from 200 to let's say 550 volts and the output is regulated at uh, say 400 volts DC, clearly the output voltage is not always higher than the input. When the input is more than say 400 in this 400 to 550 range, it is uh, going to be 
uh, higher than the output voltage. But what we have is this transformer. Uh, so this is a transformer isolated boost. Therefore, you have this tran transformer with a turns ratio 1 is the N, N on the secondary side. Therefore, uh, we will show in this video that what is really important to remain in the boost mode of operation is that Vn is uh, less than the reflected secondary voltage, reflected output voltage on the primary side, that's V over N. Okay. So this is how we select the turns ratio to ensure that um, for this entire range of input voltage variation, the uh, Vn is always less than V over this uh, turns ratio N. Then uh, let's briefly look at the advantages of boost converters specific to this uh, PV application. Um, so it is uh, highly desirable that we draw a smooth DC current. So that will be the IPV that we draw in this path. So this, uh, as much as possible, should be a smooth DC current um, with a minimal uh, either 120 Hz or high frequency component. So the boost converter, because of the inductor on the input side, inherently draws a very smooth uh, current with uh, just a small high frequency ripple so it is not it is a non pulsating current um, largely a dc with a small high frequency component on top of that dc current okay. so therefore the size of the um, the capacitance needed to support this small high frequency ripple is, um, is very small compared to for example a bug derived topology where the input current is highly pulsating and you will need a very large uh, c as well as another filter inductor to make the input current smooth. Okay. So that's the advantage of uh, any boost or a boost derived topology. But the disadvantage of a boost derived topology is at the, is at the output stage. So on, at the output side, this current here, this is a pulsating current. Okay. So therefore, normally a very large capacitance is needed to support this pulsating current and providing a smooth DC current at the final output of the, of the converter stage. Now this may not be a, a big problem in a, in a PV application because um, the current drawn from here, this has a, in a single phase system, this has a, a large component at 120 hertz, which we saw to uh, to support the uh, difference in the instantaneous AC power and the desired smooth DC power. So this capacitor has to be anyway large to support this 120 hertz um, um, current with a very large RMS value. So therefore, the uh, the um, the requirement of a high frequency current through this capacitor uh, in a boost that is not really a major drawback because anyway this is um, uh, rated for much higher uh, one twenty eight component. Okay, now before we get into the isolated boost, let's uh, very quickly review the basic non isolated boost converter. So the schematic of the basic boost is shown here. So when the switch is on, we apply the full input voltage across the inductor. So the current through the inductor and therefore the energy in the inductor builds up. And when the switch is turned off, then the current flows through the diode into the output capacitor load combination, releasing part of the stored energy into the load um, and the capacitor. Okay, the switching signal for the switch S1, the uh, Q sub A, is shown here. So it is uh, one, uh, or the switch is on, for a duration of uh, D, which is the duty ratio, times Ts, which is the switching period. And it is a uh, zero, or the switch is off, for the remaining uh, 1 minus D times Ts um, interval. Now, when Q is 1 and the switch is on, the uh, voltage V sub A, which is the same as the voltage across the switch, is zero, because the switch is on. And uh, when the switch is turned off, the current flows through the diode, clamping this point uh, A to the output voltage. Therefore, V sub A is Vivo during the off interval. Uh, we can use this um, uh, this waveform together with our um, uh, steady state analysis to calculate the input output relationship okay. now by um, kvl around this loop and from the fact that vl average uh, is zero the cycle by cycle average of inductor voltage in a dc dc converter is zero so therefore vl average is zero therefore v average is simply vn so that, that is uh, this uh, expression now, by looking at this waveform, we can get the average of VA to be simply, uh, it has a finite value only during the off interval, and it is zero during the on interval. Therefore, its average is 1 minus D times VO, and uh, that is equal to VN. Therefore, we get this expression for the input-output relationship. Uh, for a basic boost, VO over VN is 1 over 1 minus D, and since D is um, uh, varying bit 
you can the valid range of d is uh, between 0 and 1 it is always uh, a step up converter okay so this is the complete schematic of the isolated boost dc dc converter um, at the input we have this inductor then we have these four switches which perform the uh, function of the S1 in the non-isolated case that we saw in the uh, previous slide. Uh, so they connect to this high frequency transformer. On the secondary we have this uh, full wave rectifier with uh, four high frequency diodes and then we have this uh, output capacitor of, uh, of a bow stage. Now in the non-isolated uh, boost we had the switch on um, f during the on interval connecting the inductor across the input voltage. Now that function is done by having all the four switches on the primary side on. Therefore, once again, the boost inductor is connected directly across the input voltage and the current and therefore the energy in the inductor builds up. The off interval is uh, quite different from the uh, non-isolated case. So here we have um, two distinct um, off intervals, one corresponding to the um, positive half cycle and one correspond to, corresponding to the negative half cycle. So in the positive half cycle or the positive off interval, we have the switch S1 and S4 on. S1 and S4. And uh, that we will see that uh, it applies a positive voltage across the transformer windings. And uh, during the negative off interval, we will have the, uh, we will uh, switch off S1 and uh, S4. We will have S3 and S2 on and uh, that we will see applies a negative voltage across the transformer windings so that uh, the average voltage across the transformer windings uh, is zero okay so the sequence is uh, first we'll have all four switches on then we'll have only the first diagonal s1 and s4 on for the first uh, off interval then once again we'll have all the four switches on and then finally we will have the other diagonal pair of switches s3 and s2 for the negative off interval so the uh, timing of the gate drive sequence uh, is given here for each of the four switches. Uh, so in the first interval, so this uh, figure shows the gate drive for one complete switching period and that is divided into four sub-intervals. In the first interval, as I said, we need all the four switches to be on so you can see the gate drive for all the four switches are high. Then this is the first uh, off interval of the positive half cycle. So here we need to have S1 and S4 on. So if you have, if you look at the gate drive, S1 is still on here and S4 is on. The other two are turned off. Okay. Then we go to the third interval where once again we have all the four switches conducting as seen, as seen here. Uh, there is another on interval in the same switching period. And then finally in the fourth interval we'll have the other, uh, we'll have S1 and S4 turned off and we'll turn on S3 and S2. Uh, uh, seen here. So this is S2 and S3 on and S1 and S4 are off. Okay, um, this seems to have become a fairly long video. So I'm going to uh, shift the discussions on the um, current flow path in each of these intervals. The, um, the basic waveforms uh, in order to be able to derive the input-output relationship. Uh, those discussions I'm going to take it up in, a, in, a, in the next video.